Okay, now here I have a few uh, passages here. I want to demonstrate how to uh, how we can use these uh, passages to to preach, so that we have grace and the law to remind them. We have grace to motivate them and the law to tell them what to do. The law tells us what to do and also to warn people if they don't obey. So we need both in our preaching and in our daily life also. We all need the law to tell us what to do. But as far as punishment, it should be a small part for people who are faithful to God. For instance, for myself, I'm motivated to do evangelism or serve God. I don't have to say to myself, if I don't serve God, God will be angry with me. I, I have a strong motivation. So for me, my motivation is mainly from God's grace, God's nature and grace. But I do obey the law. I do obey what God tells us to do. The, I do obey the commandments. Uh, it's just the fear the pun of punishment. I put it very, uh, you know, I put it very low. But there are some people who always push people to obey. They say, you have to obey. Now, I want to say this. Many people will say, yes, I believe in God's grace. Uh, I live under God's grace. But when they preach, they always say, go do evangelism. Read the Bible. Pray. It's always telling people what to do. And I want to say, don't just tell people what to do. Tell them. God has compassion on them. And when we, you know, He cares about them. He cares about me, how He has blessed me. So He really spent, God spent a lot of time, a lot of effort on me to save me. If God has put so much effort into saving me, I want to uh, make God happy. I want to please God by going to tell people about Jesus. I want people to be safe also. So, so um, instead of just telling people, go do evangelism, I'm saying, don't just tell people to do evangelism. Say, look at what God has done in your life. God has forgiven you. God has worked in your life for so long. God has accepted you for so long. God has moved. The Holy Spirit has moved in your heart for so long. God has blessed you in so many ways. So we should go and make disciples of all, of all nations and bring blessings to them and God will be very happy and will bless you. So instead of just telling people what to do, I'm saying first talk about God's nature and grace and encourage people to live out that nature of God, to live out that nature of God, have compassion, care about people, forgive people, be nice to people, be kind to people, to all do all these things and and see how God has motivated us and thank God for that and then uh, and believe that God will be happy with us He will bless our life and He will reward us also it doesn't mean that Christians should obey always because just because of the reward you know I obey because I'm so happy with God I just want to obey God I just want to make God happy I, I just have the heart of God. I just want to see people saved. I want people changed. I want to see people go to heaven. When we have the heart of God, we already have a strong motivation. So, so I'm saying, please, don't just use the law to tell people what to do. Now, people didn't understand that this is the law because they're thinking, you know, just thinking the Mosaic law. I'm talking about the, um, the commandments. Don't just use commandment to obey, to preach the gospel, but to, uh, give people the motivation. Okay, Matthew 10, 41 to 42. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Okay, now this passage is very encouraging for us to do good to other people. First, if you find a prophet and you're not perfect, you're not 
as great as a prophet. But when we receive a prophet, when we see a prophet, and we receive him, of course, a true prophet, not a false prophet. There are many false prophets in this world. There are people who, who uh, say prophecy, who prophesy just for money. And their lives show problem. So don't just follow any prophet, anyone who says they are a prophet. So uh, check out their lives first. Actually, I suggest that you follow your pastor. Your pastor will find out if these prophets are true prophets of God, of God or not. Don't just go around for prophets. He who receives a, a prophet in the name of a prophet. Now, from Mark 9.41, we see that you know, if someone gives you a cup of water because you belong to Christ, he'll by no means lo lose a reward. So from that verse, we explain Matthew 10, 42, whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water, you will not lose a reward. So it's the same idea. So the idea is that to give to one who belongs to Christ. So it's saying because he's a prophet of God, that we receive him. Receive him means to take care of him, to be nice to him, to help him in whatever way he needs help. And then we shall receive a prophet's reward. So it's saying that even though you are not a prophet, you can receive a prophet's reward when you receive him. And then if you f don't find a prophet, you receive a righteous man. You are nice to a righteous man. And then you shall receive the righteous man's reward. Even though you are not so righteous as that righteous man, still God will reward you with His reward. And then if you cannot find a righteous man, if you just find one of these little ones, the little brothers of Jesus, any unimportant person, any child or any uh, weak Christian, any person, any Christian, that whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciples because it belongs to Jesus, we do that. Or we do it to a non-Christian in order to bring the person to become a Christian. Uh, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So Jesus is saying, whatever you can do to a Christian, or to a non-Christian to bring them to Jesus. God will be very happy with you and God will reward you even though you might be doing a little thing. So Jesus is saying, it's not hard to please me. It's not hard to receive rewards. So this would give people the motivation that when we encourage people, even when you Put the chairs in, of the church in place. God is happy with you and He will reward you. Even when you welcome the people when they come into church, God will be happy and He will bless you. And even when you go and tell people about Jesus, you pray for someone, you help someone to understand God more, to love God more, God will be happy with you. Whatever little things you do for Him, He will be happy with you and He will bless you and He will reward you. This way, we are motivating people with God's grace. That is what I mean. So I hope that you all learn this. And instead of just saying, uh, just go and, and uh, receive them. Just go and do something good. Don't just tell people what to do. But say, when you do this, God is very happy with you. When you encourage people to uh, sing in the choir or to be a worship team member, you tell them, God is very happy when we praise and worship Him. When you lead the congregation to worship Him, God is very happy with you. So when you join the worship team, if you are called to be a worship team uh, leader, now not everyone is called to be a worship team leader. Some people will sing when they sing, it's always out of tune. They should not be a worship team leader. But when you have the gift of uh, leading worship, when you serve God, God is very happy with you. So that's how we motivate people to serve God. And when you welcome people, and God is very happy when you welcome them. So come and join us to welcome people. Or when, to visit people, God is very happy with you and He'll bless you. He'll give you more strength, more talents, so that you can do greater and greater things for God. And He'll reward you and bless your whole life. So that's how we can motivate people with God's grace. Okay, so here I put down a, a simple outline here. Not every point, but just some points. Grace. God treasures the prophets, the righteous man, 
and any little ones. Uh, and he wants to bless them. So when people do good to them, God will reward them. So God treasures no matter the person is a great person, a pastor, a prophet, or a righteous person, or a just an ordinary Christian. God cares about that person. If we treat them nicely, God is very happy with us and He will reward us. Grace, God gives us the motivation and the strength to bless His people. God, God changed our heart so that we have the motivation to bless His people. When we became a Christian, God gave us this desire to do things, to, to, be, to do nice things to other people. And then third point, even when we sincerely do a small thing for God, He's very happy and will, will reward us richly. So Jesus, what Jesus was saying here is that, you know, He didn't say when you bring someone to Christ. Now, of course, God wants us to bring someone to Christ. But sometimes it's not easy. But to give a cup of water is easy. So even when we do a little thing, God is very happy when we do it sincerely for God's glory. Uh, you know, if God says, if you bring someone to Christ and then I'll reward you, uh, you by no means lose your reward, you know, we'll be happy. But we'll say, I try, I try, but I haven't brought any person to Christ yet. And then people will say, that's too hard to please the Lord. But so Jesus said, just a cup of water, I'll reward you. Okay, and why many Christians don't do good to others? Because they're selfish, they think they lose something when they are nice to others. And then Jesus warns those who don't do good to others. In Matthew 25, some people who don't do anything good at all, the, the goats, they'll go into eternal damnation. Uh, not, we're not saved by doing good, we're saved by grace through faith. But when we are saved, we always will do good. And then how we can have strong motivation to do good to God's servant and any little one. So how? First, think about God put so much effort to love me, to help me, to bless me. So I have received so much. And I'm happy because of all these blessings of God. So do I want other people also to experience this goodness of God? So we have experienced this, we want other people to experience that also. And then when we do anything to the little ones, to anyone, God is very happy. And also it will build up the personal relationship and we'll enjoy that too. So we enjoy our relationship with people, we enjoy serving God, we enjoy God. It will bring blessings to our whole life and God will bl bless us. So, so we can encourage ourselves and say everything, every little thing we do to people, even when we smile. When we smile to people, God is very happy and God will reward us.